asked for Ramesh Ranganathan, but the management sent me his stunt double. Hi! The joke that I made about Ramesh Rangani, and that is something that you use yeah. in your act. Something I reference because, particularly when I do gigs yeah. around the country where there's lots of white people basically, <laughs> they can't tell us apart. Have you ever done stand up in daylight hours? It's a couple of occasions you'd end up doing stand up during the day. One is if you're doing festivals. Uh huh. So you're earlier on in the bill. I'm not famous enough to be later on in the bill. You came into stand up comedy after having some interesting jobs. Yeah. A uh, policy advisor. Yes. A comms expert. Yes. And you've been in the banking industry. Yeah, I was a private banker. You wow. Did research. I'm really I impressed. There, there are quite a few comedians stand up who, who will go into comedy straight out of university. Yeah. To have these kind of proper careers, let's call them, I guess it's quite rare. Like Jimmy Carr had a career. I've had a career. Not that I'm comparing myself to Jimmy Carr, but it's much more rare than you'd realise, I think. I guess the comedians I follow all seem to have had a background in some kind of career. Often teaching for some reason. That oh, teaching's popular. Teaching's a popular one. Uh, I think there's probably like three or four I can think of. Yeah, Ramesh, um, Ranganathan. <laughs> in, your, in your previous life, huh? You were a teacher. I was a teacher. You I think I would have been a terrible teacher. I have no patience because I was raised by my mum and the, the slightest hint of insolence, I just slapped them across the head. You're not allowed to do that, are you? I'm, I'm grateful you're not a teacher as well. <laughs> For the kids' sake. Congratulations on Mock the Week. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And I guess this is what stand-up comedy is about. You know, you, you take a word, you run with it, you take an idea, you run with it, and it's it's thrilling for audience members like myself to sit there and just watch, where are you going to take us today? Yeah. On that level of spontaneity, something you have to work on, or it's in your genes? I'd say that kind of spontaneity is something that you cultivate. I think all of us have within us an ability to be spontaneous and just like with any other skill like that some people have it in spades more than others uh -huh. but it, for a stand-up it has to be cultivated there's spontaneity in and of itself doesn't really work well on stage because the audience are like I don't know what you're doing uh -huh. so you've got to learn how to structure it in a way that audiences can understand and enjoy yeah. so for me like I've always been a bit spontaneous just trying to keep up with aunties and uncles who are funnier than me speaking of aunties what do you think of auntie Shugufta? Auntie Shugufta is one of my favourite aunties. Never. I love Auntie Shugufta. <laughs> There's two shows that you've taken on tour, Infidelity and... Yeah. Profit Like It's Hot. That's it. You've, you've actually explored really personal themes, so your religious identity, being yeah. a Muslim, um, and grappling with that, and then also your relationships. Is there such a thing as having a private life when you enter into the field of stand-up comedy? The best comedy comes from reality, really. Yeah. And so all comedians, even if they're doing observational stuff, they are reflecting and putting a window to how they how they view the world, so their own yeah. private take on what the world is like. Yeah. And some comedians, more than others, are more willing to talk about specifically private things like I am. Only because, you know, so much funny and crazy stuff has happened in my life. And also tragic stuff, tragic you know, a lot of tragic stuff, stuff has happened. Do you try I... to heal the tragic stuff through comic relief? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think comedy is such a great way to deal with some of the more tragic things that we all have to go through in our lives. And often you'll find that people who are in, in the most desperate circumstances have a brilliant sense of humour, because that's the only way you can really survive deal it. with yeah, survive what's going on. And to me, I mean, to some people it might seem callous, but to me it's a great way of me making sense of the world around me. Uh, you know, at the moment there's so much going on, we can choose to do one of two things. We can sit there and just worry about what might happen, yeah. or while we're here, kind of just laugh about what's going on, because we don't know when we're going to die. No. So I'd rather, I'd rather die with a smile on my face. Yeah. Um, than no, die. Wait, well, you're not going to die on this road for the time. No, I'm not going to die on this road. But um, if I was to die now, I'd be dying with a smile on my face because I'm doing this. Aww. So I, I feel flattered and alarmed at the same time. <laughs> with the show um, tapping into your faith identity mm. and your struggles, how do you put a show together like that? Because it was quite controversial. But you know, you're, you're someone who also cares about you know the different communities you're referring to. Yeah. So how do you tackle that subject matter as sensitively as possible? Is it possible to? 
only up to a point. Yeah. I think there's only up, you know, my dad, for example, who would describe himself as a Muslim, has seen both my shows. Uh, if anything, I worry more about what he would think than really anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, but sensitivity, the thing is, with offence, the first thing to say about offence is I think offence is taken, not given. Mm -hmm. And that's incumbent on a person's own experiences. Yeah. So I can talk to you about, I don't know, make jokes about you eating too much, for example. But if that's not something you've grappled with or been worried about, yeah. it's not going to bother you. That's, that's the starting point. And so in terms of sensitivity around religion, I think trying too hard to be sensitive mm -hmm. would cause me more problems. Mm -hmm. Because I, don't, I can't police what everybody's thinking and feeling, what level of religiosity I have in the room. Okay. All I can do is say, right, this is my experience. You don't, you don't have to enjoy it. Comedy's subjective, that's the beauty of it as an art yeah. form. That's fine, but by the same token, I don't want to, as has happened to me, I don't want you to turn up to a gig with a knife in your hand because you feel like you're avenging something the Quran has said. Now, I've read the Quran, it says nothing about stand-up comedy, so I don't know why you're getting so upset. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's my view on it, is I, I try and just say what I need to say and let people make their own judgments. The, the community we come from is often so politicised. Mm. You feel like you're tapping into something that's more widely political and like you just don't want it to get sucked up into those kind of nefarious um, agendas. I feel like it kind of hampers my creative process more than anything mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, you know there are so many people who would look at me who might watch this video who, who would say there is no way I want this man to be representing or be representative of my views or my my place in the world. So this is the key thing you're not going out there and saying, I'm representing no. this group of people, but automatically that's what happens. Yes, yeah. but by the same token, though, I've spoken, I've met Asians and Muslims and Hindus, for example, you yeah. know, who said, actually, you're very much like us and we relate so much to what you're saying, yeah. we like it. And that just goes to show that there's such breadth and depth of what it means to be Asian, to be Muslim, to be Pakistani, all those things. As a comedian, I'm a joker, I'm a clown, you know, I'm a professional clown. I can't, all I can do is maybe at most put up a window to our communities and our societies and let everybody else, whoever the standard bearers are of the industry of comedy within my communities, make their own judgments and choices on that point. Because I live and die by my words on stage. I write my own words, I say them on stage. If it dies, it dies. If it succeeds, it succeeds. There's only so much I can do, really. Basically what I'm saying is, I've got enough responsibility in my life. I don't want to take the responsibility of people from Bradford, it's too much. It's tough being a clown, basically. <laughs> so tough. So tough. Anyway, <laughs> on that note, Ishan, I wish you all the best. Thank you. It has been a fascinating discussion. Thank you. Alright, tune in for the next episode. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's laughing. She was sad about it earlier. Now she's <laughs> oh my god, these tears are of laughter. <laughs> Windy storm. That kid oh, is flipping screaming. I know, some projection Honestly, that was skills. my son. He'd be getting chucked through a window. I've got a brother, he was 10 years younger than me. Okay, he, so you, you've had parenting I've experience. had parental responsibilities yeah. to an extent. Oh, it's very windy. It's very windy. We might not hear you, so let's turn this way. I think there's a sign from Allah that he's unhappy about this conversation. Yes, I know. <laughs> I think that was a good conversation. Really it was a good conversation, but it would have just been our theme. But stay tuned, an amazing ending. I'll have a look afterwards.